Welcome to your favourite day of the week everyone, and why were rabbits portrayed so violently in medieval manuscripts? I'm sure this is a question that hops through our head every day, and we go to bed looking up to the stars, thinking about why. This rabbit here is decapitating someone. These two here are beating a man to death with what looks like a giant stick. And this one here looks extremely happy to be holding this huge axe. Even Monty Python remarked to these murder bunnies. One rabbit suit coming right up. Look. Ah! Jesus Christ! Our tale today of these violent fluff balls takes place from around 1250 to the 15th century, where a lot of these illustrations of violent murder bunnies began popping up and becoming popular in the illuminated manuscripts. With the illuminated manuscripts being in strictest definition, manuscripts that are decorated with gold and silver, and symbolise the new era of textual literacy, spiritual devotion and material culture. They were written by monks and nuns living in monasteries and took a high degree of craftsmanship and time to produce and were made mainly for the use within churches for prayer and books. So why would a medieval priest want these absolutely homicidal enraged rabbits loitering around his religious books and pages? Well, marginalia, as it was known, was the process of adding doodles or scribbles into the margin of books in order to enhance the understanding of books for future readers. As before the printing press, books were copied by hand and paper was expensive. So they were seen as a long-term investment passed down through generations, with a book costing as much as a single house. The rabbit images we see are known as drolleries, which are small decorative pieces in the margins of the illuminated manuscripts, used for entertainment and humour, and depicted lots of hybrid creatures such as this walking fish from a 13th century bible. The drolleries illustrated usually turned the world upside down and subverted society's expectations, as the typical depiction of rabbit at the time was cowardice, weakness, purity and innocence, a harmless fluff ball that couldn't hurt anyone. Because of what the rabbit symbolised, it was as amusing to them as it is to me, of a rabbit taking out a rage-filled revenge on those who hunted and killed it as a role reversal. For example, rabbits hunting dogs, and my personal favourite from the Brevier or Renault de Bar in France from 1302 to 1303, is rabbits defending a tower from a dog siege. So since I like to get into the theme of these videos, I've actually tried my hand at drawing my own medieval murder bunnies. This one here is bringing his friend a cup of tea, but his friend was having a bad day, and his other friend put one too many sugars into that tea, two instead of one. Can't be ruining his teeth now, he's got a trip to the dentist next week. So in retaliation, he put three arrows into his friend to make sure he doesn't make the same mistake again. I hope you've enjoyed my artwork. <laughs> the bloodthirsty rabbits were also used to show the stupidity and cowardice of a person illustrated. As if you were foolish enough to be bludgeoned by a bunny, you were quite the loser. The images and doodles were there to amuse the unlucky soul who had to sit down for painstakingly long hours reading and copying these texts. See, the monks and nuns, to show their devotion to God, would often work in solitude from morning until night, writing and illuminating such works. So I think it's fair to them to try and spice up this dull task. I had a lot of fun drawing this. We have to remember, the Middle Ages was an inflexible society full of social barriers and culture of laughter and humour was used to try and make the world more bearable. But the illustrations don't just stop there at the rabbit. There's much, much more creativity into them, such as magical beasts shitting on knights, flying penis monsters, penis trees, sea monster with tits, arrows in the ass, chess face man, and dragons having affairs. Just like some of today's memes, a lot of these illustrations have no captions or context behind them, but you could tell these illustrators were having a fantastic time using their imagination so creatively, and that our humour hasn't changed so drastically over the years. I mean, Flying Penis Monster is an exceptional piece of artwork and creativity. Flying Penis Monster. Flying Penis Monster. Just take it in. Flying Penis Monster. It's fantastic. Exceptional. They're funny. Send a picture of a flying penis monster to your friend, they will laugh. These are fantastic pieces of work. <laughs> Another meta you'd often find in these manuscripts is people fighting snails. The snails are often gigantic and it looks like this knight is in for the fight of his life. 
The snails could also be another form of humour, as we would laugh at a knight attacking such a heavily armoured and fearsome foe. But it's just the snail, you silly knight. You can do it. You can take it. <laughs> The snails could have also represented the Lombards, a group vilified in the early Middle Ages for treasonous behaviour, a sinniversary, and non-chivalrous comportment in general. Or they could have illustrated struggles of the poor against an impressive aristocracy. Similar to the homicidal rabbits, the motives behind these image could have meant a lot of things flying penis monster. This type of drollery with outrageous animal illustrations originated from bestiaries, which were compendiums of beasts and extremely popular in the Middle Ages, but started losing their appeal in the late 13th century. The creatures of them did not though, as they continued to be features in drolleries. The bestiaries contained descriptions of fantasy creatures such as dragons, unicorns, basilisks, and griffins, and also real world creatures such as deers, bears, lions, and unicorns. Wait. Descriptions of the animals included the physical characteristics associated with the creature, although these were often physiologically the physiology physiologically incorrect, along with the Christian morals that the animal represented. The description was then often accompanied by an artistic illustration of the animal as described in the bestiary. For example, the pelican was living representation of Jesus and was believed to tear open its breast to bring its young to life with its own blood, which represents Christ's death on the cross and the shedding of his blood to revive us. So there ends our talk of the medieval murder bunnies. Thank you all for watching everyone. Make sure you try at home. Make sure you create your own scene at home. I'm sure you could have so much imagination with these. They are funny. They're used for humour. They are funny. Giant flying penis monsters are funny. <laughs> if you haven't yet, please do like the video and please do subscribe if you did enjoy the content. I've been Jamie's Day, your favourite day of the week, and this was the medieval murder bunnies. I'll see you all next time. Peace. and symbolise the new era of textual literacy, spiritual devotion and material culture.